Nick Mock 007 here again. So first off, I want to thank everyone for actively commenting and liking the last video. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, so let's see if we can keep the momentum up. Now, it really helps me a lot when you guys comment and, and like the video. So again, thank you very much. Now, as I was thinking more about the aquarium hobby, the next thought I had was kind of a basic one, but perhaps the most important safety issue of all, electricity. So today I'm going to start what I think is going to be a three-part series on electricity and safety in the aquarium hobby. So in the first part, I'm just going to examine electricity. In the second part, I'm going to look specifically at GFCI receptacles and surge protectors. And in the third part, I'm going to look at grounding probes and some basic uh, safety measures. Now, I don't think I'm going to be saying this a lot in the upcoming series, but this is literally life and death for you and your family and your fish, so pretty important stuff. All right, in case you didn't know, water plus electricity equals bad. I hope you guys can follow that uh, complicated equation, but this is true whether you run a freshwater or saltwater tank, and we need and use a lot of electricity to keep, our, to keep our tanks happy and healthy, so let's get started and take a closer look at electricity so we can understand not just what to do, but how and why we use things like GFCI outlets. Okay, so first, just a basic lesson on electricity. Now, power is what makes the meter on the back of your house spin, and it tells your electric company you know, how much to bill you for. To understand what electricity is, you first have to know what an atom is. Now, an atom is the basic unit of matter. It's the smallest part of something. Um, everything is made up of atoms. Now, atoms themselves are made up of three parts, uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, so protons, they have a positive charge and are in the nucleus, and they do not move. Neutrons, they have no charge, uh, they're neutral, and um, are also part of the nucleus along with protons. Electrons are very, very tiny and are not part of the nucleus, uh, but instead they move around in orbits uh, outside of the nucleus. Okay, chemistry lesson is over. Um, pretty painless. Uh, anyways, what does this have to do with electricity? Okay. Electricity is the flow of these electrons through simple matter and devices. There are two states of electricity, either DC, which is direct current, or AC, alternating current. Now, in my series, we're going to focus on AC uh, because that's what runs through the wires of your house, but it's important to know that both can be deadly. Now, the rate of atoms um, electrical flow in an electrical circuit is called amperage and the measurement is amperes. Okay, an ampere or amp for short is the amount of current that will flow through one ohm which is a measure of resistance so the amount of, uh, that will flow through one ohm under a pressure of one volt. Uh, I'll put up the mathematical formula um, I equals E over R where I is the current, E is the voltage and R is the resistance don't have to remember that, but just something if you're trying to do some calculations. Now another term I'm going to be using is uh, watt, which is the power that a device uses to do the work. Um, though it's important to remember that one um, result of this work is always heat, which most of us know, especially when we think about the lights we run on our tanks, or pumps or anything like that. Okay, at this point I want to mention that under unfavorable conditions, just a mere 100 milliamps of current can kill a person. So this is why we need to be extremely careful when working around electricity. But I'll come back to this in more detail later. <clears throat> but let me just say for the first and last time in this series, uh, excuse me, the first and not the last time in this series, if you do not know what you're doing or are unsure in any way, it's crucial that you contact an electri uh, a qualified electrician. Now for those of us in the US, the AC voltage of households is constant at 120 volts, or more or less constant. If we look back at that formula, it, the one that we just talked about, it can be seen that with a constant voltage, it is the resistance of a material that affects the current's flow, the, the current flow. As an aside, it is the number of electrons that establishes a material's conductivity of the current. So plastic, acrylic, glass, wood, even air are non-conductors, meaning that there are no free electrons and therefore no current to flow through the material, resulting in a high resistance. Now, maximum current is limited by the safety of devices being used. So, 
These include uh, things like circuit breakers in the main panel, fuses, um, and the devices, whether it's a power strip or the ballast of a light, for example. Okay, so I'll give you one more formula uh, for wattage. W equals I times E. Now using the formula and entering constants of a voltage and a 15 amp circuit breaker, W equals 15 amps times 120 volts, which equals a total of 1800 watts. That would be available for a 15 amp circuit. Now I want to make clear that each device plugged into that circuit branch adds to the total wattage being used and the heat being dissipated. So overloading the maximum capability of a circuit branch could result in heat damage to the devices um, and or the electrical wiring and in worst case could result in a fire, an electrical fire. Alright, now probably the majority of folks are already um, using an installed wall outlet that's, avail that's available you know, close to their tank. And many folks are probably using multiple outlet power strips to plug in, you know, various lights, heaters, pumps, you know, etc. So let's just take a look at an example scenario that I've sort of made up. Uh, at, you know, for example, uh, the total wattage being used for an average mid-sized 55 aquarium. Again, this is just me making something up, but just for an example. So if we estimate that lights plus a filter plus a power head plus a heater, we end up somewhere around 500, 600 watts. But it could be more or less depending on your setup. Now that's obviously well within the 1800 watts available on that 15 amp circuit that we just talked about. Now the voltage for the 15 amp uh, outlet <coughs> used for the tank comes from the panel circuit breaker. But besides the tank outlet, the wiring is usually daisy chained to every other outlet, every other switch located in that same room and sometimes adjoining rooms. This is what's referred to as a branch circuit. Each device plugged into an outlet or through the switch uh, and is turned on adds to the total load being used in that branch. Now there could be eight outlets throughout the room plus two or three wall switches, overhead lights, lamps, ceiling fans, TV, stereos, computers, etc. So now we have the potential of adding, you know, it's hard to say, but 500s and another 1,000 watts to that circuit. And if we add the tank's input to the maximum wattage load, could be anywhere between 1,000 1,500 watts, somewhere in there. So, point is, if you're running multiple tanks, you can see how quickly this can overload and get to the point of tripping the circuit breakers. So, just wanted to throw that out there. It's important to know, kind of roughly, what, you know, what circuit you're using, what else is on that circuit, and how much power you're drawing. At least a rough estimate. So at this point I want to go into more detail concerning the dangers of electricity. So now part of this information comes from a book called The Electrical Wiring Residential 13th Edition. Um, it's by an author, Ray C. Mullen, and it's based on the National Electric Code. So again, this is for the U.S. <clears throat> but the same principles hold no matter where we're talking about. So many injuries have occurred and many lives have been lost because of electrical shock. Again, this is from this book. Coming in contact with live wires or with appliance or other equipment that is hot spells danger. A severe shock can cause considerable more damage to the human body than is visible. A person may suffer from internal hemorrhages, destruction of tissues, nerves, and muscles. Further injuries can result from a fall, cuts, burns, or broken bones. Alright, so I'm just going to show you a quick chart that I made up to drive home the point. It shows the effects that various DC and AC current levels can have on the body. Though I missed, couldn't find a couple things, but you'll get the idea. So, the effect of an electric current passing through the human body is determined by how much current is flowing and the length of time that that current will flow. Now this can be worsened by things like holding metal aquascaping tools, having your hand or arm in your aquarium, i.e. water, standing on a wet floor in a puddle, those kinds of things. Now, of course, the worst case uh, for any of the above is that the body contact causes the current path to flow through the heart. Now, there's good news, of course. To prevent this, the National Electric Code calls for the use of ground fault circuit interrupter devices, or GFCI, or sometimes just called GFI. So, folks, the point is there's actually something that you can do to protect yourself and your family, which I'm going to actually explain in detail in upcoming episodes, but since my attention span is short, I'm going to keep this short, uh, well, short, I don't know, but I'm going to cut this one off here. 
If you have any questions, uh, please post below in the comments. I do read and respond to all comments. Um, as always, don't train any finger muscles, please, you know, but if you can manage to hit that like button, I do appreciate it. Um, but whatever you do, don't get carpal tunnel writing comments. Uh, uh, you know, don't want that to happen. And of course, don't forget to come back to part two, where I am going to be looking at depth at the GFCI receptacles um, to discuss how and why they work to protect us. I'm also going to address the question of do you need a GFCI or is a surge protector enough because I've heard that quite a bit. Oh, so you don't believe me that I'm making a part two? Subscribe to my channel. I dare you. See you in the next one.